not that kind of fight, but they can like get mad. Que tal, mi amigos? I am in Leon, Leon, Nicaragua. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys around a little bit, show you where I've been staying. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna walk around. I'm grumpy, man. I'm grumpier than Shrek. You know, uh, I have this dating coaching business and I let it die because I got sick of writing about dating. And then I started a copywriting business and AI came along, the economy collapsed and it wrecked my career as a copywriter. And the travel vlogging thing, I've been lucky to make $100 a month. I'm really blessed to have that little bit of extra income. The only videos that ever did well travel vlogging were my ones that were about danger or sex or drugs. So anything about marijuana or danger or sex. But the thing is, is that YouTube demonetizes and age restricts anything about marijuana. Um, it's not a great topic anyway. And danger and sex, I just find negative. I don't know. I don't want to just focus on women and, you know, base human desires and, and, and playing into people's fears, telling them, you know, that these countries are so dangerous and shit. But if I just walk around showing people things, interacting with people, like I'm lucky if I get a thousand views. And you know how much you make for a thousand views on YouTube? Two dollars. <laughs> so if you don't make at least a hundred thousand views, it's really not profitable. And so I kind of like wonder why do I even bother, right? Just to get a few comments. It does give you something to do. Uh, it gives you a reason to go outside. It's kind of fun, but it's not that intellectually stimulating. So right now I'm in a transition. I'm, I'm creating more dating content and helping and helping guys to, to meet more ladies, to be more social and stuff like that with my other business again, because robots can't take that away yet. Let's take a, let's take a look around here in Lyon. So Lyon is the second biggest city in Nicaragua. And it's quite a beautiful city. I really dig the layout. It's pretty typical Spanish colonial architecture. And, you know, you have your hat vendors and watch vendors. And this is a street that has a lot of memorials, memorials to heroes. Nicaraguan, oh, lo siento. <laughs> he's, he's a, this is a cool guy apparently. Let's see what it says. He was born in 1969, he lived in Managua. Uh, he was an activist of propaganda. So he was a propagandist, that guy. This guy over here was a warrior of some kind. And this whole street, you can see, is lined with these memorials having to do, I think, with the revolution that happened here in Nicaragua in the 1970s. It's really quiet right now. <laughs> For the last three days, it's been a big party. I'll show you some footage from that, from part of that party right now. So this, this celebration, what's it called again? La Griteria. La, la Griteria. Griteria. La Griteria. Like, like big jail. So what is it exactly? It is a celebration of um, uh, God's mother, which is um, clean of any sin. So that she, um, uh, she didn't die, she went straight up to heaven. So this is a celebration in, um, so this is a contest that each group will dance. And there is a contest that they will determine who is the winner. Right, so they'll have a dancing competition. A dancing then... competition. <laughs> And 
we're back. So a lot of this street, if you see all the artwork is, is chronicling the revolutionary spirit. Yep. Sandino live, San, Sandino life. Yes. Rebel life. I like that term, Sandino. If you guys know more about what happened here, tell me in the comments. Tell me about the history of the revolution. Look at this guy. Faustino Ruiz. He must have been a real hero to get a monument here on the main street in Leon. It's so bright. <laughs> it's really hot. But look at the architecture. It's really cool. From what I heard, like Granada here in Nicaragua, Granada is the most famous city for tourism, but Leon also has really amazing architecture. It's very safe. There's very little crime. Nicaragua is actually one of the safest countries in Latin America, in Central America at least. Or so they say, nothing bad's happened to me yet. A couple drunk guys did try to rob me, sort of. They threatened me, but I used my alpha male uh, Spanish to get out of that situation by saying, hasta luego. They were just asking me for money aggressively, but you know, you gotta have your wits about you, but it's relatively safe. The cops here don't even have guns. Whereas I was in El Salvador and there was a Christmas party going on for like, 20 people and they had like seven dudes with machine guns and full body armor here in Leon I haven't even seen one gun the cops don't carry them. There's no shortage of churches in Leon So let's go. Let's go take a look Well, this one's a real beauty I find Leon to be a really pretty city. I haven't seen much of it I've just sort of I've just sort of hung out in the downtown core because I'm I'm working all day writing blog posts, editing articles. And so I haven't done a whole lot, but the main thing that people do here is volcano boarding. And I just I kind of want to do it, but it's like 40 US dollars. And uh, I'm Canadian, so that's like 60 bucks and I don't really feel like paying it. Look at this. a beautiful church so if this is Jesus who's that guy the bald dude he looks like a skinny version of Louis CK let's just do a little street walk here out of the main tourist section you can see all the shops It's just like 4 p.m. So people are just getting off work and here's some of the typical tourist stuff. Look at these little rum bottles. <laughs> Selling toys for the niños. Little malandros. Local buses. Go, go, Andre, Andre. Yeah, so people are just getting off work and it's get, gonna get crazy. They're very good at driving motorcycles. If you watch some of the really big travel YouTubers, there's two styles. There's the bald and bankrupt style, which is let's go into the most dangerous place. You have to know the local language so that you can translate all the conversations and, and you just do it with a handheld GoPro. <clears throat> and this is the style that like everybody's emulating, including myself, because it's minimalist and it's easy. Then there's the other style. There's the, I have expensive camera gear. I'm gonna do top 10 lists. I have a drone, I have a camera with a great big zoom lens, and I'm going to spend days editing my videos. And those get a lot of views when they're done really, really well. And there's no in-between. If you're going to be a travel vlogger, 
you're kind of screwed unless you go into really dangerous places or you focus on drugs and sex like a lot of travelers do like I was forced to marry this woman in uh, the most dangerous neighborhood in Colombia or what seems to be working now are shorts because YouTube put a lot of money into shorts and so I know some vloggers that are making like really great money by taking all of their long form content and turning it into shorts and well that seems like a good idea. I also think that shorts are what's destroying society and destroying the attention spans of young people and old people alike. I'm a big fan of philosophy, of taking a long time to build something. Uh, I believe that like, if you put in just the minimal effort, you're gonna get the minimal result. And that's one of the reasons why my vlogs, you know, they're only getting a hundred, a few hundred views right now because I'm not putting a lot of effort into them. I'm not turning them to epic adventures but you know it's it's hard when you put a lot of time and effort into something this guy's a backpacker you put a lot of time and effort into something and you don't really get any return and people say hey you shouldn't worry about the money you should do it for the love and it's like yeah but we all need money we all got to do something how else are you supposed to travel you know travel the world and do the things you like to do without having to go back to your home country, pay rent, have a car, have a mortgage, or have kids and a family and work full time to support them. It's tough. So of course, all us digital nomads want to make a little bit of money. Look at this. Nice little alleyway and a beautiful third world ditch full of garbage where people just toss their rubbish into, into the ditch. It's a funny thing you see here in like Latin America, people, they just throw garbage out the windows of the cars when they're, they eat something and they just throw the rubbish on the ground. Like nobody picks it up. There's no, I've never seen a garbage man come by and clean up. Look at it all. It's just rubbish everywhere. You never see that in Canada because you would be shamed if you threw some garbage out the window you, you would be shamed by the people in your vicinity. What are you doing? They say, what the, what the hell are you doing, man? Don't you have any respect? But in a lot of these third world countries, they got bigger problems. Cool bikes. Yeah, so these are what the local streets of Leon look like once you get out of the central core. There's a lot of these huge houses with these great big open plazas. They're so cool. Look at this old furniture and they have open courtyards. This city, even though the original was destroyed, this city is four or 500 years old. Here's a little niña. Hola. Hola, como estas? Oh, for me? Alemanio, what is it? Huh? Yum, yum. Oh. Alemanio, es bueno? <laughs> so cute I just want to like pick her up like a little Yoda put her on my back and go for an adventure look how cool that is the engravings it's like it's like it's like made by hand like someone got up there and really put a lot of effort into their wall como estas probably has a very hard life, this fucking horse. It's tu caballo. Oh, beautiful. Hermosa. Adios. Look at him go. Back in Canada, we don't put color on anything. Everything is gray or blue. And here in Latin America, everything is pink and bright with colors. Look at all these colors. They, they really, they may be poor, but they try to brighten up the neighborhood and um, make things beautiful. There's a movie called Mad Max, Mad Max Fury Road and the director, he made everything bright and colorful because he said in the apocalypse, <laughs> at the end of the world, 
any civilization that was was left over any civilization that that would be left over would try to beautify the remaining environment so in a lot of poor countries in latin america and thailand and southeast asia anywhere you'll see color is used because it'll increase your mood so even though you're struggling you can still look around and see beauty Have you learned English? Yes. Are you from uh, uh, yeah. Nicaragua? Yeah. I need I need a selfie with a Nicaraguan, a real Nicaraguan. Okay. Um, and what is your name? Kaylee. Kaylee. What's Kaylee. Kaylee. And how do you speak English so well? Because I I study in academy for five years, so. Let me ask you, why do you live in Lyon? Why do you choose Lyon of all places? Because I live with my parents, oh. so I have no choice yet. And what do people who are 20, what do they do for fun in Lyon? We go to the parties. I think the Nicaraguan people like too much parties. Yeah, and here in Lyon it's really like everything is near, everything is close. It's easier to find a great spot or a great place to Mucho fiesta. Yes. And you but party now, too much. Mm, Are you drinking too much? No, not now. I won't tell your mom. <laughs> I won't tell your mama. <laughs> no, not now because I'm working and I work at night. So I, it's tired for me and I, I don't need... What is now. your work? I'm a waitress. Uh, Nicaraguan food or Chinese? No, it's a bar from bar. here. Yeah, like... Just over there? Yeah. And um, how many hours does a Nicaraguan waitress usually work? And at, at night shift, it's supposed to be according to the Nicaraguan law. It's supposed to be seven hours, but we. But work they're slave eight. driving you. We work eight hours, and sometimes we work more hours, but that is um, overtime, mm. so they pay for that. That's good, and you make tips. And the Nicaraguan all, not don't all tip. the time because. Uh, like it's a bar the people doesn't doesn't feel like they have to give a tip in Nicaraguan culture tipping isn't normal right yeah no it's normal but we are cheap yeah <laughs> <laughs> how much does a like a Nick typical Nicaraguan waitress make in one month in one month um, more than five thousand or five thousand is the average because they pay 250 a day is it good? Mm, it depends because if you work in a restaurant, it's not that tired. But where I work, is really tired because they. It's are the guys, the men here, are they uh, aggressive? Are they pinching your body when you no, walk no, no, by? No, 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 no. No, they don't do that. They are respectful. That's good. Thank, thank God. They the are culture respectful. for women here. It's are the men respectful? Yeah, I mean, in a bar, they cannot do that. And how many YouTubers run up to you every day? How many? <laughs> no one. It's the first time. <laughs> I didn't Numero know. Numero uno. YouTuber. Yeah. And uh, what, where do the other 20-year-olds go when they leave Leon for fun? 
They go for nature, like swimming or to the beach. We don't have to. Oh, yeah. You know, something funny is that the young, the, I mean, yeah, the young people get drunk and then they go to the beach at 4 a.m. They, they I don't drive? Know. Yeah. That's really gross, though. But it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be and that smoking, drunk. And they're smoking weed? You cannot ask that in a video. <laughs> <laughs> not in Nicaragua. Maybe in Canada it's, it's legal, you know? Yeah. And but I was not in Thailand place. and it was you could smoke anywhere now in Thailand. In Mexico, they're talking about it. But not in Nicaragua, huh? No, no, yes. So don't do it because it's yeah. not legal. <laughs> so you do it. Yeah, see. Sí. <laughs> doesn't don't like that like if I tell you um I you shouldn't put the garbage there they start a fight really yeah you say hey don't throw the garbage on the ground and then they want to and they, they can, become melandros no 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 <laughs> not that kind of fight but they can like get mad um, you don't, you don't so you when you tell with. people hey don't throw garbage do they ever try to beat you up yeah yeah they have they Why are they so violent? Because, because their mommy didn't love them enough? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they doesn't receive enough effect. <laughs> 